Hello, my name is Taryn Packer and I'm a Simulation Support Specialist here at GoEngineer. Today I want to talk to you about four tools that you can use to best manage your contact sets. Contact sets come into play when you have an assembly that you're trying to simulate in SolidWorks with multiple part files interacting with each other. You want to make sure that those part files don't flow through each other as you're running an analysis. Sometimes that happens, it's called rigid body motion and it causes the analysis to fail because it's unstable. So you need to make sure that you have your contact sets working correctly in the beginning so that you don't spend hours if not days figuring out where your bad contact set which causes your study to fail due to instability. So the first tool we're going to go over today is called interference detection. Interference detection is not a simulation tool. It is a SOLIDWORKS tool, but it's very useful for simulation. You go to interference detection by clicking on the evaluate tab, then click on interference detection, then you need to click calculate. That calculates exactly what your interferences are, and if you have this box checked, treat coincident as interference, it treats the touching faces of two different part files as coincident interferences. So this one here is the only one where I'm actually interacting with another object, meaning my bolt is taking up the same space as, as this brick here. You can actually see what part files are interacting with each other. So this is bad. I don't want this in my simulation unless I'm using a shrink fit option, which I'll show you in a little bit. So our next tool is contact visualization. Contact visualization plot is found in simulation. If you right click connectors and go to contact visualization plot, then you click calculate. You can see in a linear static study, there's five different contact sets and I've got each of them represented here. They come in as color coded in this plot. So red is the bonded, purple is the no penetration, Green is the allow penetration, yellow is the virtual wall, and orange is the shrink fit. And that's where that volumetric interference comes into play with that shrink fit contact set. I'm not going to explain how each of these contact sets are used or set up. I just wanted to show you that in the contact visualization plot, you do get a color coding of each contact set. And here's a table that I made to show you exactly which contact sets become which colors. You can see after we get into a thermal analysis, the thermal contact resistance is purple and the insulated contact set is green. So the next tool we're going to go over is find under constrained bodies. Right click connections, go to find under constrained bodies and then you click Calculate. And it runs through a quick calculation. Now you can actually see which bodies are under constrained. And you can see how they're under constrained. If I click on this translation, I can see that it's not constrained in the positive or negative Z direction. And if I click on this rotation, it's also not constrained around the Z axis. You can actually see those happening in real time on the screen. So now I know how I can constrain this body. And if I go in and make a change, I can go back into my under constrained bodies, click calculate again. And when I have a fully constrained analysis, I get this message right here, model is fully constrained. So now I know that this is fully constrained and I can run everything just like normal. A quick word regarding the limitations of the under constrained bodies tool. Basically, you can only use this tool when you have bonded contact sets or pins or springs, things of that nature. If you have no penetration contact sets, virtual walls, shrink fit contact sets or bolt connectors in your study, then the under constrained bodies tool will give you an error and it will not work. The last tool I want to go over with you is called contact pressure. 
This is the only tool that's actually present after I get results. So if I go to my contact pressure plot, I can see that my contact pressure is actually part of my simulation plot. Under display, it's the very last option. And you need to make sure that your show vector plot is turned on for best results. So if I show that plot, you can see under the forces that I put on the back of this wrench here, I'm getting these high contact stresses around this bolt. I get higher contact stresses at the edges of the bolt because there's a moment on this wrench from this force right here pushing on the side. So now I know that I'm getting accurate high contact pressures at the edges of the bolt, which is what I would expect from, expect from this model. My name is Taryn Packer, and this has been a video on contact sets and how best to manage them. I hope you've learned something from this video. Thank you. Have a good day. Mm -hmm.